Friday, June 19th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today I want to talk about the dirty secret uh, about money printing, uh, taxes, MMT. Uh, many people have been asking if we can print all the money uh, to spend. Uh, not us, of course, the, the government and the Bank of England. Why do we need to pay taxes? Uh, I'm going to quickly go through that. I also want to look at some headlines uh, that have come out today for the UK. Uh, and uh, then look at the markets, of course. Before I do that, though, I'd like to thank all my new subscribers, all my existing subscribers, all the people who have supported me through the years, through PayPal, through Patreon, through uh, buying uh, merchandise in the Maneco 64 Teespring store. It helps. Uh, thank you very much. So now to this dirty secret. Why can't the government just print the money or get the Bank of England to print the money so they uh, can spend it on anything they want? Well, the dirty secret is, of course, that uh, without taxing uh, our currency, our fiat currency that is basically conjured up out of thin air that isn't backed by real money or commodity money, uh, it would be worthless. <laughs> and that's why they have to keep taxing you. That's why they have to make this fiat currency as well a legal tender. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that forces everyone to use that currency for the payment uh, of debts, uh, public or private. And that doesn't mean they can't use other currencies for transactions, which they can, but they have to convert it at the point of sale afterwards to the local Bank of England currency. So, um, yeah, that's why taxes are so important. Uh, not only income tax, but all the other taxes that we pay. Uh, there's a tax on everything almost nowadays. We we laugh about the, the window tax back in the 1700s, I think it was. And you can see uh, still uh, the vestiges of the window tax. Uh, you see old Georgian houses with their windows uh, covered by brick. You can see where the windows were. Well, that was a tax that if you had a window, you had to pay a tax. So what people did uh, is they covered their windows with bricks so they didn't have to pay the tax. But nowadays, we, we've got, what, what have we got? We've got VAT, uh, value added tax, which is like a misnomer, I think, and which is a tax on, on consumption. Everything you buy that's new, and even used things, you have to pay 20% to the government. What else have we got? Well, we've got council taxes, which are the local taxes here uh, in London. Uh, apart from the council tax, where you live, you have to pay a tax to the mayor of London, uh, Sadiq Khan, right? 25 years ago, we didn't have a mayor of London. Uh, we didn't have to pay tax to them. Uh, what else have we got? Well, you've got like uh, airport tax. You've got uh, all these charges when you fly uh, abroad or if you take a flight within the UK. Uh, you've got uh, taxes on um, petrol or, or gas, uh, as the Americans call it. You've got, uh, what else? Taxes on uh, tobacco, taxes on booze, on alcohol. I mean, I'm sure I've miss, missed some, but yeah, they have to make uh, the money, um, the fiat currency worth something. So the collateral that they use, instead of having a collateral in the free market, which would be uh, precious metals or anything that the market decides. But the reason I talk about precious metals is because uh, it's been used for thousands of years. It's what the market decided. It's not what governments decided. Governments have hijacked the system, of course. So, yeah, uh, in this uh, fiat currency uh, system where uh, the bankers, through the Bank of England, of course, Bank of England uh, is said to be uh, public and independent and, and uh, nationalized, but 
really the way the Bank of England works is they're still in bed with the private commercial banks. And uh, this uh, monopoly power that they have to issue the fiat currency uh, gives them this power just to create these phony pieces of paper, these uh, phony credit entries that are backed by nothing. So they have to have your collateral. Uh, have you ever thought about why they keep pushing you to, to, to borrow money uh, or to borrow or to get credit? Well, because they have to keep this phony system going. And the only way they can back this money is to make you pay it back, is to make you want that uh, phony money. And why would you want that phony money? Well, because you can only pay your debts with it. You can't use anything else. And you've got to pay taxes with it. And that's what gives it uh, the backing. And that's why uh, taxation is so important. <laughs> and usually the countries that are able to keep their fiat currencies for a certain amount of time, like in the UK and the US, they have very strong tax offices. And in the UK, if you go back historically, uh, they started the taxation really in the uh, late 17th century, which corresponded roughly to when the Bank of England was created. You also had wars as well that... Uh, pushed the state to uh, legislate income taxes like they did in the uh, mid-1800s. They came up with the income tax in the UK to help pay for the debts from the Napoleonic Wars. You had the income tax also for a few years around the time of the Civil War in the States. Uh, I know that was uh, discontinued, but then you look at uh, the Federal Reserve. <laughs> it was... Uh, the Federal Reserve Act was passed in late 1913. In the same year, they uh, reenacted uh, and also created the Inland Revenue or IRS in the U.S. because they knew they were going into a fiat currency system. Yes, it took many decades for that to evolve, but these people, uh, these people's plans are very long term. So even MMT, if you really look at, uh, I think her name is Kelton, Stephanie Kelton. I've read some of her stuff. She doesn't say that uh, they're going to have MMT and no taxes. She's still for taxes because I think she realizes that uh, this phony uh, fiat currency needs to be backed by tax. So that's why they can't uh, just uh, abolish your taxes because the bankers... Uh, they have to have uh, people want <laughs> their currency, their currency that's backed by nothing. Can you imagine um, if anyone uh, like me or you uh, here in the UK or in the US, if we could just lend people money out of thin air, it wouldn't really be worth anything. You probably need uh, a very strong... Uh, organization uh, like a, an army of uh, thugs to go and uh, tell people that they need to accept your fiat currency, your paper money, and that if they don't, they're going to, you know, uh, have their kneecaps broken. So that's how they do it. And that's the dirty secret. Uh, so if we really don't want to pay too many taxes if we don't really want uh, government and the state to be too intrusive. We need to go back to a free market uh, system, uh, an honest money system, uh, monetary system. And how will that uh, lower taxes? Well, because um, in the current system, it's very easy for them to tax uh, because they have uh, the printing press, they can dilute the debt. And uh, but uh, in a sound money system, borrowing money is very difficult because it's real money. It's uh, money that people have worked for, and uh, people won't stand for it. So uh, the politicians and the bankers won't have as much power. So that's the only way we can go back uh, or pare back all the taxation uh, that we have 
it's not through money printing because if they do all the money printing all the MMT what will happen if they don't charge you any tax uh, that uh, fiat currency will become worthless very quickly <laughs> and then that's gonna be an even worse uh, tax than we already have right now so that's what you need to understand the only way for us to be freer from taxation is for us not to expect uh, governments and central banks to give us money for nothing this fiat uh, currency phony money it's for us to uh, withdraw their monopoly of issuing currency money should be uh, something that's created in the free market so um, I highly recommend what has government done to our money by Murray Rothbard I'll put a link uh, to a free PDF of that book below in the description. Uh, if you read that book, and it's a very easy book to read, you don't have to be a PhD economist to read. You you understand what I, I'm trying to tell you. So with that, let's go into uh, some of the uh, headlines, some interesting headlines, uh, and it's to do with that in the UK. So yesterday, the Bank of England uh, did boost its bond buying by a hundred billion of what nothing really uh, of more of your taxes in the future that's what it is it says a hundred billion pounds but it says they're slowing the pace wow isn't that great <laughs> they pumped in 200 billion already uh, in March now another hundred billion so that's 300 billion uh, that was as expected uh, I noticed the 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 British pound dropped quite a bit yesterday. Not surprising. There's some other headlines here as well. And it's a bit confusing uh, because, and I think they want you to be confused by this because if you look at the world debt clock, it says the public debt to GDP ratio in the UK is 105. But uh, today we're being told that the... Uh, Debt to GDP in the UK has surpassed 100% of GDP for the first time since 1963. The thing I would say though, that debt, UK national debt, is a lot more than 100% of GDP. And why is that? Well, because they, they don't include, I think, uh, the debts that they had to take from uh, banks like RBS, which... Uh, the Treasury still owns around uh, two-thirds of their shares. Uh, so, yeah, it says that retail sales have rebounded in the UK as well um, for May. So let's have a look at uh, the retail sales. Well, uh, retail sales were expected to go up 5.7% in May uh, from April. They went up 12%, which is... Not surprising seeing that the economy is slowly reopening. Uh, in April, it dropped 18%. Uh, but the interesting number really to look at here, I think, is the year-on-year -year number. Uh, it was expected to drop 17.1%. And it was not as bad as expected, of course. It dropped 13.1%. But it's still a huge drop from a year ago. And I'm seeing stories as well. Uh, for example, I read a story the other day about how uh, nurseries or uh, the equivalent of kindergartens or uh, daycare centers for children, uh, they're going to have to increase prices by 5 even 10%. And parents are going to have to make a choice. One of the parents is going to have to give up work if they want to, uh, because they won't be able to afford for their children to uh, go to daycare centers and that's the inflation. That's the rising prices. And in the, this article I read a couple of days ago, and it was in the Telegraph, it even said that back in 2018, uh, uh, the price of that service had already risen by 5%. Another reason why you should not believe the powers that be, what they say about inflation, that we have a deflation problem. Uh, they just want to keep inflating the system, as I've said many times. So what else have we got? Yeah, I saw a, an article as well about how the uh, breweries uh, 
are not putting big orders for hops here in the UK for the beer because they're not sure what's going to happen in 2021. So the farmers, the hop farmers are kind of in trouble. <laughs> that could mean higher prices for beer uh, going forward. So these are just examples of all the things that uh, are happening. I think the biggest uh, thing right now is that there's so much uncertainty about what's going on in the economy. And uh, I think uh, we will see surprises more on the downside. Don't forget, we still have millions of people in the furlough scheme, and that's going to end in a couple of months' time or so towards the end of September. I'm not sure exactly. I think, yeah, October. And once that ends, these people are going to go into the unemployment ranks. Uh, yeah, some of them, of course, will hopefully get their jobs back, but I think it's going to be a lot worse than expected. And I'm also starting to see uh, even the mainstream media looking at the Telegraph saying uh, things like uh, one of their comments by a guy called Fraser Nelson says, the threat has passed, so why are our civil liberties still suspended? So there you go. Um, even the mainstream starting to question the uh, agenda. Well, the agenda 21, right? The uh, World Economic Forum, the Great Reset. Uh, these people are trying hard to uh, change things. And uh, for me, as I've said, the only certainty is for you to try to be outside the financial system as much as possible. I don't think we have markets anymore. They're highly manipulated. The central bankers uh, have kind of taken over it. Uh, and uh, just to try to keep the flow of credit going. Uh, but the central bankers can't really inject the credit directly into the economy. They got to go through the commercial banks. And I think the commercial banks... Uh, are not going to play ball as much as the central bankers and the governments want them to. And, and I think uh, the prospects for the economy are not great. So I think we're going to get more stagnation. Uh, but one thing's for certain, we're going to get more and more uh, printing of this fiat currency that's worthless. You're going to have more and more taxes because we know they need to tax you. Uh, but uh, there comes a point where they can't tax you and what they'll do is they, they'll just inflate it even more, that currency. And that's why precious metals still make sense. So there you go. Uh, let's quickly look at the markets uh, this morning. It's 8.25 a.m. Uh, yesterday was a very uh, quiet day. I read something that uh, volumes were really low in the stock market. I guess it's the summer doldrums. <laughs> the Dow was down, but only 39 points. S&P was up just over a point. Uh, and um, so this morning, uh, we've got gold up about 7, at around 17.30. We did get up to like 17.38 uh, yesterday. But as you can see here by this chart, we are in a trading range right now. Uh, the uh, key level on the upside, of course, is around 17.50, even though there's a spike around 1765 and, and below I guess 1675 uh, is a key support uh, but uh, either way I think we're gonna break ba break from uh, this trading range either on the upside or the downside but as I said before don't focus too much on the fiat price of gold try to accumulate gold as a savings instrument and try, try to count your gold in grams and ounces, not in the fiat currency. Uh, silver is up about 20 cents this morning, so up over 1%. So that's a pretty good sign there. We're still uh, holding below 100 in the gold-silver ratio, which is good. We're at 1756. The Dow future is up 100 points, or a third of a percent. S&P future is up 0.4%. And the NASDAQ uh, 100 futures up 58 at 10,068. Currencies are fairly quiet, virtually unchanged here. The, uh, the pound, 
the euro and the dollar versus the yen. Uh, crude oil uh, firming up here. We're almost up to $40, the WTI, which is a key uh, resistance. It's been a, a, a key level for many, many decades, actually. A couple of decades, that level. So it's a very important level. We're up 2.2%. Finish off uh, the bond market, the 10-year yield is up two basis points at 0.72. So there you go. Uh, we won't uh, get away from big government taxation until we get rid of central banks, <laughs> uh, get our politicians uh, to uh, enact or to abolish their monopoly uh, with their agent, commercial banks, private banks, to issue the currency uh, yeah, and go back to a sound money system. So we won't get, get away from this big government taxation uh, system that we have until we do that. And it's one of the reasons why I keep uh, making these videos about the monetary system, about precious metals, about sound money. I know it's a lonely space <laughs> and uh, don't have a huge audience, but if I can... Uh, wake uh, one person up each day about this subject, I think uh, it's a good thing. And, and that's why uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button, but more importantly, you also share it with as many of your friends uh, as you can or colleagues that you think would enjoy this kind of uh, message. And uh, also think about subscribing uh, to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. Uh, so I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.